Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, it's Veteran Day coming up Wednesday, and that would be the 11th, right? Right. The 11th of November, and I tell you, it's always it's always a major event. It's very something that uh, we all tend to to get out with and get involved and the like. It's it's so important, if you will, to recognize um, our veterans here in the in this country and being born specifically here in the st in the city of Portland, Oregon. Okay. So anyway, we're going to talk about um, about the vets and. And all that, that, the events and the like, and whatever, and what are some of the events and and the like, and um, and then we're gonna go into um, another special guest that we have today, because you know these are veterans, they're both men and women, if you will, and we've got a very special guest, and probably bring you back in time, uh, Emilia Earhart. Uh, she's gonna be here. She's gonna be here. She's gonna be here. Oh yes, oh yes, very much so. I mean, uh, this lady's gonna be here. She's like a. What, 112 years old? And you like notice, that? you notice, Fred just jumped right on there. Deal. He, <laughs> he, he, you did well. You, you took my bait. <laughs> you took my bait. <laughs> anyway, she's. Uh, we've got a person that's going to represent. Talk a little bit about me, Al Hart. Plus, fact, you know, this again, like I said, this is Veterans Day. You know, when, men and women were both in the in the in the court too. By the way, Fred. Okay, but my guest, uh, as you notice, Fred just jumped right up in. You know, Fred. Uh, Fred Stewart has been here. He's been on the show. And but beyond that is that uh, Fred is also running for. City Council. Correct. City Council position number three. Three. Position number three. Running, running in the, for the job that Steve Novak has. And Steve Novak has, and he's also a former Marine. He's yep. a former Marine, and uh, again, this is Veterans Day, so I thought it would be neat to, to have Fred here to, to acknowledge, if you will. Yeah, but I'm uh, not in you guys' uh, class. You guys see combat. No, uh, that, no, see, you notice that's why I've got him on here. He, he just he, he jumped right into the bait right off the bat. Well, the, the, the idea is that there's no one that was sitting on the, presently sitting on city council that's military. You did you know that? No, I did not notice. Oh that. wow, yeah, well, that's why I'm, that's why you're here. I, See, I you're not, not you're not you're that. not elected to office yet, but you are military. You're in the yeah, process of look, running for office. Nobody on city council is a fighter. I mean, as you can see, we're going to tell. We're going to talk about they that. Don't fight. Uh, the first thing. I first, bet they got bullied in high school. Okay. You ready? <laughs> see, he, he's going to be good down the post, isn't he? Gonna, we're going to get him in here. Yeah. Anyway, and just see it to what, my... What, what I'm getting to is we shouldn't be surprised that they didn't join the military. Okay. <laughs> well, see, see it to my left on the screen is, is Bruce Hall. He, he's the he's commander of the Peninsula uh, right. Pep Post. Oh, well, right here. See? <laughs> See, on the on the oh. screen is left. <laughs> okay, I, I, I picked him up too. I, I wanted to catch him up too. And by the way, he's a vet also too, a uh, veteran of former war. And so anyway, what we're going to do? We're going to give you a little some, some feedback in terms of what is the VFW, a veteran of foreign war, some of the activities they're involved in, and mm -hmm. and uh, and the benefits of of that this, that particular organization, and, and some of the events that are going to be happening here on the 11th, if you will, of November. So with that, I'm just going to give. Um, I'm going to give uh, Bruce the opportunity first. We're going to educate Fred. You know, okay, we're going to, at, at the end of the day, he's going to be a member, right? Right. We're going to sign him up, so no problem. You guys are doing something special. Well, no, you're supposed to do, just be cool. For the Marine Corps. Just course. take it easy right now. Just Good remember, day. just remember, just on. Okay, so, so Bruce, talk about the VFW. So the VFW history. is is Veteran Foreign Wars, and uh, it began, get, began back in 1899. So it's been around a while. It was started to, to serve veterans because veterans were, they fought in wars and things, but they didn't have, they weren't taken care of. Mm -hmm. So the VFW was formed. It's uh, also a social type of club that uh, you can become a member and work together to help one another. But as all other nonprofit organizations, uh, to be a nonprofit, you have to be involved in supporting the community and doing community service type things to maintain your nonprofit uh, status. So our Veterans of Foreign War here in Portland, post 1325, which we, we meet at the Eagles Club over on Lombard in North Portland. Hmm. Uh, I went to a meeting, I, I joined in 1989, I went to, became a junior vice in 91, they said, well, if you'll be the commander, we'll help you. Well, I've been the commander ever since. And where's the help? 
<laughs> I'm still looking for the help. <laughs> but uh, VFW, uh, it's really important because we, we're, we're losing members. I mean, we the big part of them were World War II vets. Mm -hmm. Well, these World War II vets, you, you know, are up in their 90s or yeah, and so most of them are dying off. Uh, and so, and then a lot of the Vietnam vets felt so uh, abused and thing they weren't joining organizations. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and our society has changed a lot, the uh, form of communication and thing. So a lot of the younger vets uh, haven't been haven't been joining like you'd want them to, because they they're involved with the internet. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, sports, uh, different things like this that uh, takes their time, and they got families. Uh, so there's a lot of different things involved. But one of the big things about the Veterans of Foreign War is that we have organizations. Our national headquarters is in St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, we are very involved with politics at the at, in Congress. Years ago, many of the congressmen were veterans. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, there's hardly a veteran in Congress. So henceforth, if you're not, a, if you don't have veterans in the organization that's governing what they do, the laws that are made and how they take care of veterans, it becomes null and void. So we need membership because if numbers speak, and if you don't have members saying, "Well, we got two million members," mm -hmm. you know, then the, the the people could care less what you do. But we're always in there fighting for veterans, uh, whether it's of medical needs or uh, this type of thing. And you know our Congress. Mm -hmm. One day they'll they'll vote something, and then they'll, the next day they say, "Well, we don't have any money to do that," but yet they can take pay raises and this type of thing. So we need uh, more members to build up our numbers so that we can continue uh, representing veterans in our government, mm -hmm. because. As you know, with the, the wars in the last few years, uh, Vietnam, uh, I was in Vietnam, uh, a lot of those people who were World War II, I mean, a lot of them are dying because of old age or mm -hmm. died of age of orange, but with all the technology and stuff, the, the soldiers that have been on the way in Afghanistan, Iraq, a lot more of them are living. Mm -hmm. They're not dying. So henceforth, they're 19, 20 years old, they're coming back to the states, disabled, missing arms, missing legs. So they, they're going to need more care and more need to, to meet their needs. Uh, so we need to really take the uh, VFW and, and, and support these guys in Congress. So that's that's the main thing. Uh, we, do, we do need members, and uh, uh, it's real easy to join. I've got applications if anybody wants to join today. Uh, uh, well, let, let me stop you at that point in time. In fact, he, he nabbed me. He nabbed me, and, and so now he not only did he get me a membership, but I'm also now a, a lifetime member of the VFW, and I really appreciate the, the efforts that Bruce made. But but beyond that, you, to, to really know who Bruce Hall is is that he, he's really a staple in the in the uh, in the community. He's, he was a former postal worker, and he was going door to door, and he was the guy that was knocking on those doors and meeting people and he, he really understood his community. I mean, he knew exactly what was going on in, in that community. I don't know, he's since retired. He, right, you know, he's four since, years ago. He, he, he's since retired aspect of it, but but he was well known, and, and, and like I said, he, he's a hard worker, he's a very hard worker, but like he indicated, uh, we need to get more of these young people involved in the VFW because the services that they provide, like for instance, uh, the, the the benefits that are, are due, if you will, many of the vets, if you will, are dependent upon uh, the VFW to fill out that paperwork. It's very cumbersome. Otherwise, it would cost them uh, lawyer fees and this, that, and the other. But but at each VA, whether you're on the Hill or whether you're in Vancouver, Washington, in every post for that matter, they've got uh, the VFW is there to service, and this is just a volunteer kind of a deal. And and the VFW picks up the well, the tabs are being picked up by the deal, but through the VFW. But the fact of the matter is, is um, it's really a benefit because many of these vets don't want to talk about their issues and whatever. They don't know where to get their paperwork and the like. And, and but the, but uh, so so it's it's really a, a service that that's well needed, if you will, and and a very respective group, if you will. And so 
so here we are now, uh, like like uh, like Bruce was saying, we got all these young folks that are coming out with with uh, legs and all all kinds of atrocities. And and the other main thing that came out of this whole piece was the PTSD, post traumatic stress dis disorders. And a lot of times people don't understand what that was all about. In fact, I'm sure when we I was over, I was in Vietnam myself, and Bruce was too. Uh, there was no such animal uh, during our time. I mean, the old first sergeant would say, "Just get up and go." What's your problem? You got a problem here? And unless you got, unless you've been busted or shot or whatever, uh, there was no deal. But but then, like I said, there there are many in Vietnam. The Viet Vietnamese, uh, not Vietnamese, but uh, the, the, those who served in Vietnam, all of a sudden are now getting those services. I mean, at a late age, and a lot of them don't know where to go. And uh, and that's 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 another very important thing that I've always stressed when I'm here on the show. You know, if you've got relatives out there that are that are uh, Vietnam vets, they're older and whatever, but a lot of them want to talk to me. They've got services, they have opportunities there. And with this new administration, well, the, the, the present administration, we got a lot of benefits over there. I mean, even in the Vancouver chapter over there, they've got uh, they've got a cafeteria down there that actually serves good hot meals. Whereas before it was just frozen, you know, just frozen stuff, processed kind of stuff, whatever. I and mean, they got some facilities over there right now. And, and, like, right, and like Bruce said, a lot of these guys, the, the services are there, but they don't go. You may see some of these people on the corners. And that's why I got Fred here. I want Fred to talk about that a little bit. Uh, we want to, we, we got a problem. We got, we got guys that are sitting out there on the corner, peddling for monies and whatever. You've seen these signs. I'm a vet and this, that, and the other. Some are not. So sometimes they they misuse the, the this situation, say that they are vets and whatever. There's no one really to audit that process and whatever, which is something, by the way, I, I plan to get involved. We talked about this before, and I'm sharing this with Fred too because that's something we need to address here in the city of Portland. Got you know I me? Mean? But anyway, but, but but Bruce is a very very dedicated work along that line, and and we'd encourage uh, some of you young people that have that have served in Asia now and and uh, in Afghanistan and this that and the other. You might want to consider. Uh, giving a VFW. In fact, you can just Google it on your smartphone. It says VFW, and you can call any VFW chapter in in the country for that matter. But here in the Portland metropolitan area, you'll find that it, uh, it's a good place to go and and chat a little bit about some of your issues and your concerns and whatever. And uh, it's 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 well it's well deserving. And, and and the fee's not that much. It's not it's not that much to join. And there are a lot of services that go along with that too. Uh, with that, you can call somebody and talk to someone. Very much like on that line. Now, Bruce, uh, I talked a little bit about who you were and whatever. Let's talk about some of the activities that you. I, you know, I know about all the activities you do, but a lot of times you may see uh, may see these poppies and whatever. You 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 give those out too, right? Yeah, uh, talking about the buddy poppies. Uh, okay, what is that? About? We basically uh, distribute these around Memorial Day time, and some posts do it around Veterans Day. Uh, you can do it either time, but I mainly do it in May the third and fourth weekends of May and uh, we uh, go to Fred Meyer Safeway stores and we stand outside and we take donations and these donations go into a relief fund. This relief fund is used for veterans uh, purposes so as you can see on the, on the front of it it says honor the dead and help the living. Mm -hmm. So you buy a Buddy Poppy, you put it on your shirt or your hat, and that shows that you uh, support the veterans. And then the money that's taken in goes into helping the needy vets. So that way we honor the dead and help the living. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've done real well. The last, I, I basically was doing it by myself for several yeah. years, and this last, this last year I had like, about six members from the post that helped out at different stores. I was trying to cover like four stores by myself. But mm -hmm. With uh, six more people, you cover more area. And I tell the people, I said, it's not selling buddy poppies. Mm -hmm. You're out there taking donations. Because mm -hmm. people basically, they might not support wars and right. things that are going on, right. but they do support the veterans that are doing these things because that's their job and they they obey they go and do it because they're told to do it and and uh, I also run a program with uh, elementary schools I go in the month of May I offer it to all elementary schools in North Portland called veterans in the classroom 
and I go and take another veteran with me, and we we show our old army gear, and, and then I talk. I start. I, I ask the kids. I say, well, what is uh, a vet? And they think of somebody that takes care of their cat or their dog. Mm -hmm. But uh, then I explain what veterans are, and then I go through what wars are, and I ask them, is war good or bad? And of course, they're going to say, you know, bad because right. of all the killings and things. Right, right. But then I, then I bring into the effect that well, how did we get our freedom? Mm -hmm. And then freedom is not free. So I, I've gone to most of the schools in North Portland one time or another. The last two years I've gone to one school that had like 100 students in, in Oh, you invited when you when you go to school? I, I, I go and I, 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 well, I go and... Or do you invite yourself, so to speak? I, I present this to the principals Principal, at the schools. But they don't call you. And they call me if they, they want it. If they want it. If they want it done. Okay. I don't you. force myself, you know. I got you, I got you. And then, uh, then I also go into the buddy poppies and what they do, so yeah. they uh, uh, explain... Uh, what goes on with that? Mm -hmm. Last year I had 100 students, and I talked to them about all these things. And about a week later, I got 45 thank you letters. Is that right? These, wow. were, these were third, fourth graders. Right, right, right. So that was wow. that's what it's all about. Wow, wow. You got a parade coming up too. Oh now. yeah, and then we have we're involved in parades. Uh, my oh. little league team, uh, I, we sponsor a little league team, and uh, this little league team. Uh, I take them in the St. John's Parade, which is a community parade, right? And I buy two thousand four by six flags, and they pass out these flags along the parade route. Because uh, I don't believe in just sponsoring a team; right. I believe in trying to teach these kids what veterans right. are right. and what right. veterans have done. And, and so the flag, and the flag is and very the flags. Important. They need to know what and that so flag, that. what it, what it represents. And so that's the St. John's Parade, but then the Veterans Day Parade coming up on November 11th over in the Hollywood area. It will start at 945. It goes up Sandy Boulevard from 40th to 48th. And then at uh, Ross Hollywood Chapel, right outside, they'll, they'll have a little stand there, and they'll have a couple speakers uh, involved in uh, a little ceremony. They'll place a wreath, and they'll raise the flag. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that ceremony, if there's people who are interested, they're going to have a USO show style show down at the Hollywood Theater, mm -hmm. which is free. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, they, they give a little lunch for the first 300 people. So and that's at uh, the lunch is at 12. The uh, USO show is at 12:30. So mm -hmm. there's lots mm -hmm. of things going on yeah, in the Hollywood yes. area. Uh, yeah, they do quite so, a job. They do quite that's a coming job. up this ne coming Wednesday. I might add too that uh, he got me involved in the parade last year, and and what I did was that I was I had a bunch of poppies and I was just handing those out free, and I had my my bucket, and then they would put uh, put bucks in there, i.e. whatever. But it was really nice. It, and uh, so again, we're looking for volunteers, right? Right. If you if, you know you don't necessarily have to be a member, it would be nice to be a member. Like we're gonna get Fred today. He's gonna he's gonna sign. You got an application, right? Oh yeah. Okay, we got an application. We're gonna get Fred to get involved. It in doesn't matter that I haven't been combat. Uh, I mean, I never, I wasn't oh, in the service. You weren't in combat? Nope, oh, wasn't in combat. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you, you have to be a, yep. in combat. Yeah, man. So all of my war stories involve Bootry. NCO class, I mean, I mean, NCO club, women in ignorance. Oh, oh is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, you needed to have gone overseas. You needed to help you out. I wanted to go. I mean, but it never happened. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Even though I would no, say I, my dad said I had a very successful military career. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least at least you're you're getting educated about yeah. what. But this, I can volunteer. What does mean? You can volunteer. You can volunteer. Because yeah. yeah. I want to make sure that people on that on that, uh, in the city council and whatever recognize that that that, that veterans do exist. Yeah. A lot of times they get out there and they really don't know which which direction to go with. Because, I mean, that's another concern with a lot of the organizations for veterans. Uh, you got a lot of folks that are popping up that, are, in all due respect, are not military, and they're not really giving the, the services that they need. People are just kind of like, excuse the friends, they just No, a lot of people say they, they, they respect the military. They really don't. They, I mean, it's not that they're trying to be mean. They don't really know what that means. They've heard it all their life. They don't understand, and it's very difficult for them to understand what military people, mm -hmm. you, know, get, you know, give up. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, being an army brat, I remember when I decided that I wanted to marry my ex-wife. The reason why I got out of the Marines was because I knew she couldn't handle the sacrifice. Not, and this is not a negative, no. not her. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. 
Plus, I thought it would be mean for Mar uh, Marine to put that on somebody yeah. that you knew, yeah. you know, couldn't handle it. And uh, on the other side, I look at what my mother went through, uh, with some of my earliest memories, my dad in Vietnam, putting the packages together for him, being by the TV with my grandmother, wanting to see if his name was going to pop up, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. Um, you know, my dad was a very proud 104th Airborne guy. And you're in the Marines, you know what proud guys are like. And you're oh, yeah. in the Army, you know what 101st guys are like. My, my son was with the 101st so you in know, Afghanistan in 2001. And when I went across the 101st guy today that's been in Afghanistan, yeah. it sound just like my dad, mm -hmm. 40 years removed, you yeah, know. Yeah. And my dad was, you know, 101st, 101st, 101st. So, you know, a lot of people have not been in. It's always great when they say thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. But what I'm talking about right now is I look at the people in our politics right now, and uh, I know a lot of them would disagree with me, uh, and I'm not saying this to put them down or hurt their feelings. But just in case they may be wrong, you know, I don't know if they really understand what the sacrifice of a military person is. And I think to prove me wrong, they should spend a little time looking into it. And you, you do that by sitting down and shutting up, talking, yeah. le letting veterans talk to you, you know. Um, well, well like you say, it's an education. It's an, it's an education thing. It should be in our schools, too. Yeah, yeah. It's not mm -hmm. about pushing the war thing. But, it, it, you know, a lot of folks don't realize uh, the sacrifices that, that, that a lot of folks make just so they can still live, live the lifestyle that they're living today. Mm -hmm. People forget about what goes on outside of that box to well, keep this box going. It's, it's true, but I think uh, what it, a lot of it is, what's grown into, military people and military families understand what public service is all about. Yeah. You know, a military guy puts his, his life, I mean, military people, because we got a lot of women now in the military. Well, yeah. They Broke put the their lives on the line to perform their jobs and to get their duty done. And they, it's, it's really selfless, regardless of the reason why they got in the military. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate public servant, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why I think some military people, you know, um, don't trust people in, in, in leadership mm -hmm. who haven't been in, you know, in, yeah. the, in, in the military because they're thinking, well, does this person really have a commitment to public service mm -hmm. like I do? Mm -hmm. I mean, I still remember like yesterday, March 16th, 1983, the day I, I was sworn into the U.S. Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, though I didn't make it a career, I remember that day. And I remember, if, it's not like being married, but it is a big day. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the day as you go from being a kid, just being treated like a kid and expected, you know, to do kid things to the day now, you know, like, wow, I'm no longer a, a little boy anymore. Matter of fact, that's what my dad said. He says, you're still my big man, but you're not my big boy. Hmm. You know, you know. That was my dad's response to me joining the Marines. <laughs> Lucky me. Because <laughs> my dad was an E-8. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. In the yeah. Army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. That's good. Well, look, um, I, good. I, so I, I wanted to make sure that you, you, you were here with us today because it's very important that uh, everyone's talking about, you know, things for serving and this, that, and the other. So I think it's very important that uh, folks who are running for office or, uh, i.e., representing the people, if you will, should know what that's all about because everybody wants to reach out mm -hmm. and help but in most cases they don't know where to go and how to do it and so mm -hmm. i think that's another educational thing that we need to do and that's that's why it's so important that they understand what the we do have a website is. and you have a website at what's that website post. what is that www.bfwpost1325 okay mm -hmm. yeah okay okay good that's a good one no so okay now we've covered it we've covered the parade you're going to be seeing folks on the well, doing the activities on Wednesday aspect of it, and folks will be out there walking on the street. In fact, you'll see me walking on the street. Now, he can still be a volunteer if he wants to come out there with sure. him. You can come on out there with us with you. You know, you'll be out there with me and putting poppies out. I've you'll got be shaking it. hands and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So if you know, just think about it. Oh well. But my point they're, is that. Uh, what I got going on Wednesday. Okay, okay, but it's you know, but you can if if you want to be a volunteer, you can you can meet us there on the corner of Tillamook and 36. Yeah, 36th Avenue. Yeah, until the, right in front of Grant High School. Grant High School, right in front mm -hmm. of Grant High School. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we're position number, we'll be on the 18th, right? 18th. I've got three vehicles going to be in the parade. Yeah, you, what, my one? pickup is going to be decorated. 
And then I got a van that I got a World War II vet that wanted to be in the parade, but he can't walk right. He's in a wheelchair, right. but he has a van that he carries his wheelchair in. Yes. So another veteran going to drive that van with him sitting in his wheelchair in the van. And then my neighbor has a deuce and a half truck. Yep. The a real one. one. A real oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with flags on it. Oh yeah, big time. And, Whoa. Uh, and he's gonna you come be on. following us. Oh my gosh. Man, you can ride right in that if See, you want. Yeah, I was, put your, put your I was, uh, on it. No that problem. was my MOS, 3531. Oh, yeah, okay. Truck driver. Oh, oh okay, good. Yeah, Motor he, T. he just lives okay. down the street from me too. <laughs> really? Yeah. And was is that the guy it's in a, North Portland? Is the guy yeah. in North Portland? Yeah. That one? Well, it's a tan one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I've seen that one. Oh yeah, he's good. He's good people too. It's good. Yeah. I had to go I had to get out of my car one day and just I know look, that. Look I that know deuce. that truck like the back look, of my hand. You know how many times I broke that? Uh, oh my God! Yeah, yeah he's. I think he needs he, a mechanic now. You, you do good. You oh do no, well. he doesn't. He, we'll, he, we'll he that guy knows no. that. No, no, we, we yeah, need you. Does. We want you up there getting your hands greasy. <laughs> yeah, no, but he he knows that he knows huh? that vehicle. Well. No, what about you, Fred? No, I haven't had my hand in that grease. Well, that's the whole idea. You need that, Fred. I mean, I, I mean, I in order to relate to the people here in the city council, you gotta you gotta get out there. We want you to be on that deuce. I would not mind driving one. Yeah, it's been a years. Okay, good. I've, I've, I had, had a lot of fun. When I was in the Marines, I never went to combat, but I was qualified to drive everything from uh, uh, we call those old Dodge pickups we yeah, had right, all right. the way up to an 18-wheeler. Really? But my favorite was the Deuce and a Half. A lot of folks didn't know that about I could, you. I could drive a Deuce and a Half like a sports car. See, no, Got no, a no, that see that's something new. I just found that out, man. What? That I could drive an 18-wheeler? Yeah, yeah. I, I drove it all. Good, good, good. good. Well, look. Hey, this has been just great. Hopefully, you will participate in the parade and and, and veterans. Day. Now you have, you got a better feel in terms of why you should participate. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's once a year, and it's kind of a good thing to do. You know, and then if you're interested, you got the VFW here, Veterans of Foreign Wars, and and you can contribute to their to the organization, right? And that yeah, website, you got I, a phone I do, number? and I do have an email. You got an email? Throw that email out there. VFW Bruce. Okay. At gmail dot com. Okay, vfwbruce at gmail.com. That's yeah. a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Another Bruce, see? Okay. Two Bruces. Yes, right. That's right. Yeah, we so, hang together. There you go. Big time. You have a lot of Marines down there? Oh, uh, yeah. Several. Yeah. yeah. Good. And we're going to get you involved. And you, know, we can get, you can always volunteer. Yeah. We'll fix you up. Okay, volunteer. good. Well, folks, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to take a short now. break, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about another show. We've got something else going. Emilia Earhart. She's, a, she's very authentic, too, by the way. Stick around. We'll take a short break. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back, folks. Well, we're going to have quite a quite a few minutes here with uh, someone I had the opportunity and pleasure to meet. As you know, this is Veterans Day, and too often it's, it's always identifying men and not women. Well, we're gonna we're gonna give you a, a treat today. We're gonna give a, probably one of the most famous vets of all times, if you will, and someone we heard about, even I heard about when I was going to school, Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart, is that right? Earhart. Yes. Earhart. Okay. And uh, and who's gonna someone who's gonna be given? The, I, my, sorry, my guest today is someone that is very familiar with Amelia Earhart. She has done a lot of research, and she's she's I mean she's really done her homework. And I'm talking about Barbara Ray Wiley. Barbara, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good, Chris. good, good. She's got two books up here. We're gonna go through all this stuff and whatever. But she's got some other little goodies, if you will, paraphernalia. <laughs> she's got a hat, you know, co comparable to what Amelia was at sort of worn, right? Well, that's an, kind of, authentic, that's an authentic uh, pilot's leather hat, hat right. from okay, World War II. Is. There it is, right there, mm -hmm. and, and, and the goggles and whatever. She had those on when she came here. In fact, she, well, you, you flew out of what? What was it? Back east, you, you flown up. Oh, so he said goggles. I just came from across town. Oh, 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 oh boy, I tell you, here's, here's some of the goggles and whatever. I mean, it's really neat, very unique. She has a, she, and this is another, this is another little, little, what's a little bear? Well, dog. I think he's cute. Little kind I of cute deal. Take him with me. Kind of neat with the goggles, you know, the hat and whatever. Yeah, that's kind of neat. But anyway, she's got something very, some very interesting things. She got got some cups there. And Chris, I have something for you. Oh, gee, really? This is a picture of oh. Amelia in her cockpit. Oh, really? I and love it. These I love were it. Uh, got a award in there too. These these were her professional really? photographer that I met and wow. enjoyed mm. and told me all kinds of stuff about mm. Amelia. Mm. And mm. I have one too. Thank you. Oh wow, no spirits I noticed, but uh, mm -mm. but it's pretty good. No, we uh, like that good good. What do you call it? Portland water. Portland water spirit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Well, hey, in all seriousness, um, we want to make sure we take a, take advantage of um, of Barb here, and she's going to share with us uh, some of the history, uh, I mean, the history of, of, of about Amelia, and and whatever she's written. again, like I say, she's written a couple of books, and we're going to just kind of spend some time with her along that particular line. First off, let's talk a little bit about Barb. Oh, okay. Hi. Let's talk about Barb just a little bit. Well, Go thank ahead. you, Bruce. Um, I became interested in, in Amelia. I just was looking for another teaching job. I've been a yes. teacher for 32 years of my uh -huh. life, and, and I was uh, moving to another town. And I went in this coffee shop, and I meet this man, and he's shouting and screaming and talking about everybody's listening to him, and yet people are trying to walk away from him, and he's grabbing people and yes. talking to him. And I uh, sat down next to him, and... Uh, he said, you know about Amelia Earhart, don't you? And I said, well, sure. She's, she flew around the world, and she yes. crashed in the ocean and died. Yes. My gosh, this guy jumped up, and I thought he was going to hit me. Oh. He said, she did not. I know what really happened, and on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. And that started and piqued my interest, because I didn't know a lot about her, mm -hmm. just like you. I yeah, read yeah. about it and heard about it in school. But it's one of my favorite subjects wow. today. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let's just get right up in it, then. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. So, Okay, you, so how do you got involved? You got involved with that. That was the conversation that got you to the table, if got you will. It, got you it. got me. Got and then, uh, how, when did you when did you physically get involved from the standpoint of research and this, that, and that? Well, you know, I was why. going for this job interview, and I did get the job, but I was so intrigued because this guy said he was going to do a movie, and I was uh -huh. I've always been a kind of a wannabe actress, yes, so I thought, God, this is interesting. And he sh he kept telling me how much help he needed, so I thought maybe I could help this guy. Uh -huh. And so I wrote him a letter after I got home that day and said, you know, if I didn't know I had the job yet. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll, I'll help you if I can. And I got the job. And so I was busy teaching my new position just down the road from the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I get a call and he says, uh, do you still want to work for me? And I said, well, hi. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and I found out that he was still needing a lot of help. And I told him, I said, well, let's meet again. Okay. And again, he just filled my ears with stories about Amelia Earhart. He had mm -hmm. a relationship with her. And, and I thought, wow, this is really interesting mm -hmm. stuff. And so I proceeded to help him tell his story. Mm -hmm. He was not a professional. He was not a pilot. He was not a real credible character mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he was a hard worker and he just turned into a 15 year old in front of me and he was 65 years old wow. when I met him. So he knew her personally? He, uh, there was oh, a build up for the world <coughs> flight in Oakland, California. Okay. And it was two or three months where they were 
and they were working on that plane. And there were, now it's Veterans Day, mm -hmm. there were a ton of military people all around guarding the plane, guarding the entry and the exit to this hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. The military were very, very evident in this preparation. And Amelia, I think she was a veteran. Yes. Now there's a still strong indication that she was inducted into the Army Air Corps. Mm -hmm. Now the Army Air Corps started in about 1928. They gave her a Distinguished Flying Cross Award. Mm -hmm. She was the first woman mm -hmm. to get that in 1932. And to my knowledge, she was the only civilian. Wow. So we don't think she was a civilian. Mm -hmm. We think mm -hmm. she somehow had connection. And so from there, I just started working with this gentleman, trying to help him uh, get his message out, to tell mm -hmm. his story. And it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. It took me into a world like Alice in Wonderland, wow. falling down the rabbit Gee. hole, Gee. and suddenly I was at Amelia Earhart's party. Yeah. Everybody I met, and back to the veterans. What, what, part of the country, what part of the country were you talking about now? Well, uh, yeah, this here. Robert was in Oakland during okay. this time. Uh, when I, I was in um, Southern California, okay. actually, um, he was in, in Oakland as a child, excuse me, mm -hmm. but he was living in Salinas, California. Okay, okay. So he and I uh, collaborated a lot, talked to him a lot, because I was trying to groom him into a speaker, and believe me, I was a big failure at that. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. The passion for this woman, by not just him, but other people got involved, and, and, and I developed yeah. the same passion. Here was a woman, a veteran, a veteran of not a war, not an established mm -hmm. war, but very well could have been the first prisoner of the war wow. in World War II. And that was four years before it wow. started. She also, or could have been the first MIA. Mm -hmm. Because we really don't know what happened to Amelia. Mm -hmm. The official story was she crashed in the ocean and died. Hmm. That was the official story. Believe me. There's a lot more to that story. Hmm. There's no smoking gun. No smoking gun on None. it. None. Wow. And for me, again, I was walking through this community, meeting these people, and boy, did I meet the military. I was, in, I was invited to come into General Doolittle's home in Carmel. Now, by this time, of course, he was retired. He was probably... I think at that time he was probably in his 80s. This was about 1987. Mm -hmm. And his wife and he lived in this retirement community, which was very, very cloistered and very, very nice mm -hmm. in Carmel, California. And actually, Clint Eastwood had arranged that appointment for me. Clint was uh, you met Clint? Well, you know, my this this thing took me everywhere, really? every which every which way but loose. Um, I had I worked with this first fellow who knew her. Then I met all of these people who, who were passionate like he was about solving the mystery. Mm. And uh, I wanted to talk to General Doolittle, a very famous pilot, a very mm -hmm. revered military person. And what a gracious host. Mm. I was sitting on the couch and, and his son from Pebble Beach is sitting there who actually helped to arrange. I wouldn't have gotten in there if it hadn't been for Clint Eastwood because I was approached by a group of people who were veterans. Uh, 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 a B-12 bomber in World oh, War wow, I, oh, wow. uh, or two, excuse me, was the um, one of the fellows in charge. The CEO was a NOM vet and had been a helicopter project, a uh, pilot. Mm -hmm. And this fellow, Steve, was in NOM, and he was really into helicopters. And in, he, he worked, and when he came back from the service, he ended up doing a pilot one man hop copter in his garage. And he was just going to, just like yeah. we say the space age people, you're going to get in that thing and you could go here, or there, and everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Steve was working on that. And he was a policeman on the side after he was uh, uh, got out of the military. And one day, Steve got the idea that he wanted to go bigger. 
and he decided to put together a retrofit project. Now you know helicopters yes, having been yes, in Nam. Yes. And they were he was going to design the necessary retrofit for all of the old Bell helicopters uh -huh. in the entire world. Uh -huh. And you know a lot of them. Uh, that's a lot of them. And what happened is in the old days they had skids or landing gear. Mm -hmm. Not both. Mm -hmm. Now today if you want to buy a helicopter you can get one that's got both. Mm -hmm. However, Steve wanted to retrofit, and they had say they they invested uh, they found a lot of investors invested a lot of money uh, for this project. Uh, President Gerald Ford was the first investor, wow. and sooner or later, all these wealthy people came mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. and Clint came in with one of his friends. At the time, he was mayor of Carmel. Well, Clint. I was excited. I'm here, this wannabe actress, you know, yeah, and suddenly yeah, yeah. I'm around in this You're hangar. I've got an office over yeah, here, and yeah. I'm seeing these the airplanes and all these helicopters, and, and I'm seeing Clint Eastwood come in on his private jet, and I'm, uh. whoa, I, I, really, <laughs> I really landed in the land of fun and excitement. <laughs> and so it, it, it was really fun. Um, and I said to uh, Steve, uh, the head of this organization, you know, I'd like to talk to General Rivold. And he says, well, I'll, I'll talk to Clint. Maybe he can get you in, because they were pretty good friends. Mm -hmm. And so I got in. Um, that took me to becoming kind of visible mm -hmm. as someone who was learning a lot about Amelia Earhart. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, I then met another general uh, in Oakland. The, uh, at that time, it was called the Oakland Air It was called the Bay Farm Airport, and now it's the Oakland, uh, Alameda Airport. Mm. At that time, and that's where Amelia stayed in that area as she was building up for the flight. And it was the only hotel at that time in a hotel really? uh, that had a hotel, and she was in it. Um, what happened is um, uh, the, uh, the airport started a museum, Western Aviation Aerospace Museum, okay. and they were having a Lockheed 10E Electra coming in. It wasn't Amelia's, but it was one that was like Amelia's. Mm -hmm. The skunk works down in Lockheed didn't make a lot of those, but they did have a few. She flew one, and then there were a few more scattered around. And the museum uh, hosted uh, the research consortium that I ultimately put together about mm -hmm. Amelia, mm -hmm. Amelia Earhart mm -hmm. Research Consortium. And we brought a lot of people, a lot of military people that were very interested, a lot of pilots. Mm -hmm. Oh, I met so many pilots, I mm -hmm. can't believe it. Uh, I didn't meet a lot of women. No. But guess what? They're there today. That's right. And, and Amelia was really ahead of her time. She was such a tough gal yep. with her man's world in mm -hmm. the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. she, had a, she, had a, she had a vocabulary mm -hmm. that would burn the ears of some of the mechanics, <laughs> as, well as, as well as some of the uh, radio controllers coming in landing. Yes. They said, look, Earhart, clean up your language or we're not bringing you in. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she, she had a reputation for being a tough, tough woman. Mm. And yet, she was beautiful. She also did beautiful fashions, and she, uh, this is a woman's unbelievable, very every time. Well, look, before we we can do quite a bit sure. more on this piece, but I want to get maybe some little specific as much you can talk about. You know, like her her last. When did when did people learn that she had crashed in the ocean? Okay, Something it like was uh, July second, nineteen thirty seven, in uh, in Portland, Oregon, and I met the little guy on the uh, who had been a little guy about ten years old on the street corner uh, selling all the newspapers. Amelia Earhart crashed in the ocean. Amelia Earhart disappeared. Yes. And it was all over, all over the news, everywhere. There were many people throughout the country that were tracking her flight. <laughs> Very few messages came through. That 15-year-old I mentioned claims that as an adult, who he actually went into the Army, the only reason he went into the Army, he wanted to get into the Pacific so he could search about Amelia Earhart. Wow. Because that's where she was flying. <laughs> and on and on and on. Um, there were a lot of theories. Uh, the little fellow on the corner selling the newspapers, when I moved away from California, mm -hmm. away from the saga of the hangar office and the Eastwood coming in and all of that, I was at a book signing for a woman who'd written a book about Amelia. And, at, and I was asking her some rather pertinent questions because I knew a fair amount about it. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
all of a sudden this man walked up to me and, and after and he was not very big he was, he was kind of a short guy he had been in the army and he said i've got you know you sound like you know a lot about amelia Earhart." i said well I've met a few people yeah. and he said well i'm going to tell you something I, i've only told my brother and he got made fun of me so i haven't ever told anybody he and landed on mealy island when the war was over and they were going in there to kind of clean up the area and see what's going on. And out of the cave came two Japanese officers and three natives. They did not know the war was over. And they were scared to death hmm. when they saw their guy, the guys. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this fellow, he said, yeah, I said on my team, a bunch of all those New Jersey boys, they didn't even know anything about Amelia Earhart. <laughs> you know, I was laughing how he was talking about his fellow buddies. And um, when these fellows, these uh, uh, Japanese officers came out and the natives, there, of course, there was no English mm -hmm, on, right, uh, from right. them. Uh, but they were re this, the natives were really excited. They saw these guys and they came in on a plane, so they, they started telling the army men a story. A story about seeing a plane come in, seeing a man and a woman. Mm. And so then they were drawing pictures in the sand of a woman's body and this sort of thing. And it was very interesting because this is the kind of thing that happened to me. I had people coming to me with stories over mm. and over mm. and over. And sometimes they sounded pretty wild. Mm. But there were so many coincidences, so many sightings after that disappearance. Mm. So consequently, and I am a kind of a Pollyanna character, mm. I, I, I met a lot of these researchers, people who were writing books and people who were giving lectures and, and the scientists that were talking about the fuel consumption and the, the distances and all of that kind of thing, and I didn't know anything mm -hmm. about that. Mm. And everybody was arguing with each other. No, she crashed and died. No, she survived. The Japanese took her. On and on and mm. on. All of these varying stories. Mm. And I thought, these people are all fighting with each other. And they've all got something to share. Mm. Mm. So I started the course, the consortium, brought them all in as members. And we had meetings and lectures. Wow. We, would, we would start on a Saturday morning, all day long, talking about Amelia Earhart, all the speakers, all this stuff. We'd be doing it at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and the hotel was really upset because they wanted to close that room down and put us all to bed. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it was just like we were all feverish. And that's why I say, I call it fever. I yes, call it yes. Amelia Earhart fever. Wow. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got two publications right here. That, that I take it these are yours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you know, this one right here, Barbara. Yeah, that's, that's the, the new one. That's the other one. This is the new one. This yeah, is the first one. Yeah, then 85. Okay. Um, Maybe cite any, anything exciting about some of the stories? I'm looking at the... At the, at the well, I'll tell you, uh, because it's veterans uh, uh, season, or yeah, right, the time right, for talking right, about right, veterans, right. which is one of my favorite times of the year because of all the military people I met mm -hmm. through all this, there was one theory that, that overwhelmed the... Uh, remembrance of Amelia, and that was that our president, Roosevelt, okay. approached her and said, look, Amelia, you're going to be over there anyway. You got clearance, air clearance to go around the world out by way of the equator. Amelia, you know, we really want to know what's going on in the Pacific with those Japanese mandated islands. We're going to set you up with some photography, uh, photographic wow. equipment, and perhaps you can help us out. Hmm. And, you know, Amelia was a patriot. Right. Oh, There's yeah. no question yeah. of that. Well, I want to tell, tell you about two governmental intelligent programs that started way, way back 1922 with a guy named Sidney Mashbeer. Okay. He was a senior army officer, and it was called the M Plan. Now, this was designed to acquire information from inside enemy lines. And there would be some sort of plant who would become part of the community, become mm -hmm. trusted, mm -hmm. become one of them. And there was a, uh, Sydney got involved in that sort of thing in 22. In 1923, a Marine Corps distinguished veteran named Pete Ellis 
he ended up in the Pacific Islands, the Carolinas, the Marshall yeah. Islands. He uh, uh, um, actually became part of the community. He did speak Japanese, so he was very oh, well good. accepted and very loved. Okay, good, good. And the truth of the matter is, the story was when he died, that he died because he was a hopeless al alcoholic. But then another story came through. The, the community learned that he was a military intelligence officer. Mm. So we again have another mystery. Oh, wow. And, you know, it's the veterans community is to be revered. If Amelia was inducted in the Army Air Corps, she, and if the Japanese did pick her up when Roosevelt knew where she was and mm -hmm. go because he mm -hmm. didn't want to shake anybody's boots yeah. four years before. Yeah. If all of that's true, um, she has a right to be angry. Yes. And then the final theory, not only did she survive, did she go to Japan, but she got back here and died in 1982 mm -hmm. in New Jersey. And a lot of people say, oh, this is crazy stories. Those are crazy, Barbara. Don't even pay attention. Excuse me. We had so much evidence. You know what it's like in us. You know, they have civil courts. Right, right. And you know how O.J. and a few other people, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, they yeah. go in there and we think they're dead guilty. Yeah. And in a civil court, in a regular trial, they get off. Think about a civil trial. They usually get nailed. And Amelia... I think we could prove in a civil trial because mm. of the predominance of evidence. Mm. When I was involved with the investment company and they were hiring me, paying me to research our heart, whereas I'd already done it 12 years for nothing because mm. it was the fun. Yeah. Um, when I met Clint Eastwood, he said to me in the kitchen that Christmas Eve, we all had our black jackets and our leather gold imprint on our jackets because of the helicopter group. Mm -hmm. He said, Barbara, I understand you have a lot of information in your office about Amelia Earhart. And I'm, of course, I wasn't saying anything. My mouth was open. My eyes were this big. It was yeah. Clint Eastwood in front of me for yeah. crying out loud. <laughs> and as, as it worked out, uh, he got involved. He said, look, if Barbara, if you can find that smoking gun, we are going to do a blockbuster movie. Oh, my God. Music oh, to my too. ears. Oh, my God. Yes. So he set me up. He set me up with the uh, the the producer director in Hollywood who founded Clint wow. who actually by the way did you know that Clint was a helicopter not a helicopter but a uh, airplane mechanic at Seaside California at the Fort Ord really he was that when army he, type? Uh, 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 he was an army guy yeah uh, he was a mechanic wow. and uh, when he was five years old he told his mother I want to be a pilot well during those years when we were doing this helicopter stuff he was taking helicopter pilot licenses lessons from these two CEOs. <laughs> now, let me tell you, you know how an airplane goes up in the air, and you get up there, and then you, and you get level, right. and then you do your right bank yes, and your left right, bank right. and all that jazz? Okay. This is kind of like the story. Mm -hmm. It goes up and 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 up. And guess what? We're in L.A., and I'm the only woman because I'm going down there to talk to the movie producer. Mm -hmm. Clint's arranged it. Up and up and up. Oh, I'm sick. I go with the guys. I'm with all the mechanics. We all got our black jackets right on, walking yes. through the L.A. airport, and everybody's looking at us, pointing at us, thinking we're some famous group. Yes. And I'm feeling like a star. I mean, <laughs> oh, this is very, very fun. Well, while I was talking to the director who said the movie proposal that I gave him was good. Oh, my God, this is music to my ears. Wow. I didn't know it, but the test pilot, the fellow who ran the place, the prototype test with the LAPD mm -hmm. and the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. You got this sheriff right. uh, officer in the plane. Hey, Steve, let me land this sucker. And Steve, being an entrepreneur, said, "We got about two minutes now. Okay. Keep going. He's going to land Br bring it. Bring me that portrait. Will you bring that? Bring that piece and in. And to end the story, because we're up here. Yes." The helicopter in the landing gear collapsed, oh and those propellers, it's a darn good thing they didn't decapitate. Wow. And you were there. 
No, I was in the in the coffee shop with a movie producer. I didn't even know about it. <laughs> that was the, almost the end of my story. <laughs> wow. Hey, do we have a portrait? Do we have something inside? Yeah. Oh, well, she's okay. It's it's on the screen now. You oh, don't, you cool. don't see that? You mean that piece that you that brought? Beautiful you brought? picture. Yeah, that beautiful picture. Oh yeah. Why don't you just kind of describe it a bit? What, well, what I'll it? tell you. It's a picture of her. It's a picture of one of, one of her envelopes that she. A likely had on her plane, and by the way, we're hoping to find one so we know really what happened. Yes, okay. Uh, I would just want to tell you, it was a, I was 50 years old. My son was getting married that day. Yes. He says, "Mom, what do you want for Christmas? Or I mean, for your birthday?" And by golly, that was my gift. Very authentic. Yeah. Oh, a one of a kind, too. Oh, a sweetheart. Yeah. Gee, really. Well, tell me this. Uh, I was just thinking about that particular piece. There's, a, there's probably a lot of information we haven't covered here. Mm. Do you have a website, my chance? That we might I be? do. What's um, your website? My website is www.barbara, okay. and my middle name is Ray, and it's spelled R-A-E, and by golly, a pilot climbed all over me saying, it didn't spell that way, it's R-A-Y, <laughs> but he didn't know that Ray, female, is okay. R-A-E, Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y, Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y, dot com. All right, all right, Got sounds it. good. Got well, it. Look, this has just been great. I wish, you notice I didn't intervene. I didn't intervene. Well, you, I, I know. I, 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 let me, you, I talk about Amelia. I just can't shut well, up. <laughs> we, we may have to do this again. Oh, boy. But again, <laughs> oh, happy boy. Veterans Day. I'm sure glad. You got your bummer jacket on, too. I like Well, that. I've had it Real for quick. 25 years. I've Sounds been wearing great. it. Very good. Well, thank you very much, okay? Appreciate that, Barb. Thank you, Bruce. It's been great. I like the stories. Great. It's a pleasure. Wonderful talking Okay, to folks. Hey, we'll see you next week. Look like we've run out of time. And uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Take care. Happy Veterans Day. Get involved. Is that okay? Yeah.